World War I was a war unlike any other. The condition it was fought under were horrid, with high death counts on both sides of a persistent stalemate. The Americans reluctantly joined the war, leaving their prosperous isolationism behind. Germany's misconduct over civilian waterways had proven difficult to ignore. Nearly two years after the sinking of the Lusitania, America was in. Volunteers in this war effort were scarce. However, to force men into the war, the Selective Service Act was enacted on May 18, 1917. The war was brutal. We are still haunted today by the photos of shell-shocked soldiers. The back-and-forth stalemate led to deadly innovation. Weaponry such as the machine gun and poison gas were invented at this time. America had joined the war late, and by November 11, 1918, it was finished, the Allies victorious. In a time where mental health was ignored and the needs of veterans were generally forgotten, it made sense that Congress promised a mere $1,000 bonus that was not to be paid back until 1945 to satisfy the needs of World War I veterans. However, as the Great Depression set in, this bonus became imperative to veterans in avoiding starvation. Struggling to fit into civilian life, suffering from physical ailments, PTSD, and inexperience, these soldiers couldn't have come back at a worse time. Veterans were the most vulnerable group, lacking credentials for work, lacking money for food, let alone jobs. They needed money for themselves and for them, their families. They risked their lives for their country and got nothing in return. I was horrified to see plain evidence of hunger in their faces, said Evelyn Walsh McLean. When the economy is tumbling, people put the government at fault. And in times of mutual hardship, people unite. These struggling World War I veterans formed a coalition called the Bonus Army. It started in Portland, Oregon, and was led by Walter Waters. The Bonus Army marched eastward towards Washington, D.C., hopping on freight trains and taking more buses and trucks. By 1932, about 20,000 veterans made encampments in Washington. These encampments developed into shanty towns as they stayed there for months. The Washington, D.C. police force was ordered to evict the protesters was started as a peaceful eviction spiraled into violence, and the army was sent in. There was tear gas, and encampments were torched to flames. The veterans were forced to vacate the city. The U.S. Army forcibly removed those who had risked their lives for international freedom and self-determination from the capital. It makes me so damn mad. A whole lot of people speak of you as tramps. By God, they didn't speak of you as tramps in 1917 and 18. Take from me, this is the greatest demonstration of Americanism we have ever had. Retired Marine Corps General Smedley Butler. Over a decade later, fearing another protest, yet showing respect to those in the Bonus Army, making a change for the better, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed the GI Bill at the end of the Second World War. Because of the Bonus Army's bold protests following the First World War, the GI Bill and Veterans Affairs were instituted forever changing the government's political stance on the treatment of veterans, as well as greatly improving the respect that those in and out of service deserve. Veterans now have post-war opportunities and guidance through financial, educational, and employment help. And the United States as a whole continues to reap the benefits of the GI Bill, the opportunities it gives, and the economic expansion it entails. America had poorly treated its vets as a continuity since the Revolutionary War. For the past war, serving in the military was not considered a job, but rather service was decided by volunteer or a draft, exacerbated by the fact that past wars weren't going on for decades as they are now in the Middle East. This limited the respect they received. Also, in the past, the U.S. couldn't afford to support its vets on a large scale. Bonus Army members saw themselves treated as criminals after they had won a war, a war which was a huge step, in fo step forward in ending imperialism and encouraging self-determination. By protesting, the Bonus Army reminded the federal government, along with the citizens of the United States, that veterans deserve more than a temporary gratitude, but a long-term respect, along with help to re-immerse themselves into a civilization that alienates them. The GI Bill directly led to a more intense reformation in the treatment of vets. A science developed through the sentiment that the GI Bill carried, derived from the Bonus Army, the psychological degradation of veterans through PTSD was targeted and the search for treatment began and continues. Medical spending specifically on veterans increased by over a billion dollars since the GI Bill. 
Following the bombing of Pearl Harbor, media and discourse of all forms were directed at the hardships of veterans and soldiers. Veterans became victims as well as heroes, and the popular sentiment was that more needed to be done for them. Following the GI Bill, a far greater effort to immerse veterans into a civilian economy was mandated. However, the popular sentiment followed this mandate. While the members of the Bonus Army lived in the Great Depression, they had zero chance of obtaining work anyways as they lacked credentials due to their required dedication to the war. Fortunately, low-cost mortgages and loans were instituted for veterans, which contributed to large economic growth in the 1950s. This bill has gone through multiple versions, the most current being the post-9-11. Before post-9-11, like I said, was both the Vietnam Veterans Era Bill and the Montgomery GI Bill, and out of all of the 2.4 million veterans at the time that were eligible to use those bills, only 10% used them because the benefit wasn't really a great thing to have. Since 9-11, since 2001, um, that has substantially increased by 50%. So 60% of active duty members that transfer either into the reserves or into civilian life use the post-9-11 GI Bill. The GI Bill continues to adapt to accommodate an ever-changing civilian life and economy. The fact that this bill continues to change exemplifies the legitimate concern that this country has for its veterans. Financially, the GI Bill supports veterans as they transition into civilian life. The bill gave loans to veterans so that they could start a business or purchase a home or farm. It allowed veterans to have a normal life and or start a new business, including many veterans who own clothing companies, when they got back, which gave them a purpose to serve in the American economy. Veterans had been seen as nuisances in their struggle, but their economic role led directly to expansion and gave the government more ability to spend on infrastructure. The GI Bill helped in employment efforts. The bill paid unemployed veterans a weekly benefit of $20 for up to one year. The bill also helped veterans with job finding assistance so that they could be taken off unemployment quickly. The gravest issue that the veterans of World War I faced was unemployment. It left them starving and desperate for their bonus. The government makes sh make sure that veterans catch up to civilian life, promoting equality. Educational benefits given by the GI Bill also helped many veterans financially by giving them higher education, which allowed them to expand their job opportunities and credentials. By 1947, the GI Bill was paying for nearly 7.8 million veterans, or 49% of total of the total nationwide enrollment to attend college, vocational schools, or training programs. So the GI Bill pays for tuition to state-run schools, and it pays private schools. So for instance, let's think of a private school in our area, um, Wentworth. Okay, so if you went to Wentworth Institute of Technology, that's considered private college. They only pay $22,000, $22,500 is the cap so that's the maximum that they can give you for tuition. But during that year, you'd also be eligible for a $1,000 stipend for books. So two payments paid, $500 for each semester for your books. A college degree in 1924 was reserved for the elite. A social contract developed that had only been broken when veterans, middle to lower class men, were given free admission. This bill shattered the previous socioeconomic view on education especially since the GI Bill was an all-race inclusive law, which did stir up controversy. The heroics of the Bonus Army led to a bill that completely altered the social and economic position of veterans in society. The bill that they essentially created was partially responsible for a large period of economic growth as well. But most importantly, veterans today are given the opportunity to contribute to a civilian world, and they almost always take advantage of it. And often, their work ethic is superior to that of non-veterans. History almost always creates a character event, but the stand that the Bonus Army took changed an entire nation's perspective on the importance of giving back to those who risked their lives for our freedom.